We've already talked about several forces. We've talked about weight, which is the force of gravity equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. The normal force, this was perpendicular to whatever surface you're on. And tension, which is the force inside of a rope from something that's hanging. The next big force that you'll often see uh, used in physics courses is going to be friction. Friction is a force that resists motion, and it resists this motion due to roughness between the two surfaces that are interacting. So let's say I have a box, because physicists love boxes, and I'm pushing on that box. And the box doesn't just easily slide along this floor. The box feels some friction. It feels like there's some kind of force that's pushing back against me as I'm pushing on this box. And this force is the force of friction. And it exists because if we zoom in really, really close, so let's zoom in and look at this at a microscopic level. At a microscopic level, these boxes, this box and this floor, they're not flat. They're very jagged and rough. So at a microscopic level, these two jagged pieces are really rough and rubbing against each other. And that is the manifestation of friction. The rough atomic scale uh, kind of rubbing between two surfaces. There's a few different types of friction. We can have static friction, which is the force of friction uh, when there's not motion. Friction before you start moving. The force of static friction is always less than or equal to this mu s times the normal force, where mu s is something called the coefficient of static, static friction. And this coefficient of static friction depends on the roughness of the two surfaces that, you're in con that are in contact. And then we also have a force of kinetic friction. So kinetic friction this is the friction that you feel while you're actually pushing. Friction in motion. Okay, and the friction in motion has a similar letter, F sub K, except that's equal to mu K, the coefficient of static friction, times the normal force. So this really depends on your normal force, how big that is, uh, and these coefficients, which depend on the surfaces of your objects. And these coefficients of friction are typically going to be found in some kind of table. That's usually a number that you'll look up. And it'll depend on the two surfaces that, that are interacting with each other. And the final thing to note about friction is that the force of static friction is always going to be greater than the force of kinetic friction. If you think about it, and you're trying to push a box, you experience this every day. So here I am standing here pushing with my gigantically super long arms, and I'm pushing on this box, it's really, really hard to get started. Hard to start something moving. But once you've got something sliding, it becomes a whole lot easier. Easier once you're in motion. There's a reason for that. The reason for it is because of this force of friction. The force of static friction, the force that you have uh, acting on friction when you're not moving, is greater than the force once you're actually moving. So once you can overcome the barrier that this static friction has, this hard force, this high force to get you mo moving, uh, you have an easier time because the kinetic friction is much, much less. And that's basically the major key, big extra force that you'll want to know in addition to the normal force, tension, uh, and gravity.